Hey everyone, it's Cass and welcome back. This is going to be probably a fully unedited book review November wrap up. I am really late on this and it's because I just got back late yesterday from our Thanksgiving trip where we went back to Washington State. Um, and I'm not prepared, but I do have my notes, so I didn't review these books while finishing them because I only really finished one this month of December. Um, as always, timestamps down below. I'm going to go over books first, then I'll talk about some things that happened and showed some clips. I did talk about separating these into like a vlog style thing and then a book related video. Um, I just don't have the time for that this month <clears throat> and I am getting over being sick. So, excuse me. Um, and then the third thing I'll talk about is games. It seems like I'm losing my voice. <laughs> so, November Reads, um, and I'll throw it up here. Um, the very first one that I read um, was Brave New World and that's so much as to say that I didn't read it at all. Um, I listened to it as an audiobook by Steve Parker Audiobooks here on YouTube, um, and he comes in with the second book of this month as well, so I'll mention him again. But if I remember, I'll link him below or look him up. He has like theatrical audiobooks, which was really, really cool to listen to, and kind of helped me get through some of these books because I felt like these books were pretty heavy because I wrote like, this was a hard, heavy month for me, with reading books I didn't particularly enjoy. 1984 and Brave New World, which are the two books that I read kind of first, um, felt like non-negotiables given them being classics, banned books, and books everyone told me I needed to read. I said, um, the third book that I'll mention is The Book Thief. I was like, it's a modern classic, so yeah, just a heavy classics month that was hard to get me through. I have a fourth book, which was the collected, uh, the Collected Schizophrenias, um, which I'll very slightly mention because I'm not very far through The Book Thief or The Collected Schizophrenias at all. Um, however, rounding back out to Brave New World, like a quick synopsis of the book, um, it's a novel that examines a futuristic society called the World State that revolves around science and efficiency. Um, in the society, emotions and individ individually individuality <laughs> are conditioned out of children like all the way from the very beginnings um at a young age and when i talk about like the fact that they're sciency like humans are created in this world they're not really born um and there are no lasting relationships because everyone belongs to everyone else um and then i wrote is my kind of like little wrap up and review is the first third of the book was digestible but focused a lot on the science aspect of how and why and the means to this new world full-on crash course of the world societal expectations and fundamentals of this new world which i felt like was a really great way to like lead you into the story because it explained how things are because if they would have just gone into the story and you not kind of knew how things were actually happening in the world, it probably would have been a little more chaotic than I feel like it already was. Um, and I said the later half of the book felt disconnected from the beginning and lacked the Soma effect for me entirely. Um, speaking of Soma, <laughs> if you haven't read the book, it's a free and accessible drug to all the people always to make the people always feel good. Um, it's like basically an opi opioid of sorts. Um, in large doses, it causes hallucinations and timelessness. To use the use of them and when they would be brought up, though I understand its sentiment in the story, it was super uncomfortable to me. Um, and that's true. I just didn't necessarily agree with anything to do with Selma. Um, I said, with this audiobook, I fell asleep during it several times. <laughs> it was a snooze fest to me, and I didn't really enjoy the book. Rated it two stars. In saying that, I understand what it was attempting to do in its story. It's sickly mirroring parts of our own real world now, and kind of what can happen if you follow one path too intensely without ever questioning anything. I also didn't like any single character in this book. Uh-uh, I did not. So it made, I'm reading my own review 
if I didn't say that already. I wrote all of this because I knew I wasn't going to be reviewing it. I finished it like in the second week of November. Um, but I also didn't like any single character in this book, so it made it hard to identify with any of them and became actually quite annoying to me. I mean it the way... I mean the way that people were from birth brought up and with how to feel and if they devoted deviated there was a drug easily accessible to lull them back into a state of bliss with what was fed to them. It's honestly terrifying and gross to think about elimination of all things that can make you question what they are telling you is good. I said just yuck <laughs> two star and moving on. <laughs> That's my review of The Brave New World. Um, I'm glad I read it. We'll probably never reread. I may be wrong. Um, probably not a reread for me. Um, I feel like a once through. I could, I guess I could see why it's a classic. Um, some people really love the book. I was not one of them. Next we're rolling into... George Orwell's 1984. So I have the um, book copy of it. Um, and the cool thing about this was this is actually my husband's, but someone else has like annotated several parts of this book throughout it almost on every page. Like nothing is dog eared, but um, like several pages where they wrote in it and it's two different handwriting. So two people have gone through this and done that. Um, but when I was talking about Steve Parker audiobooks, I paired the audiobook when I didn't feel like reading, which was a majority of this month, with the actual physical book of this. So I would keep track and try to stop the audiobook based on chapters, and then I would, you know, put a bookmark where that chapter was, excuse me, in here, and then I would read a bit, and then I'd pick back up <clears throat> in the audiobook. Um, and again, this was just a harder read for me. I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and so the audiobook and Steve Parker's audiobook specifically like really helped it be easier to get through. Um, I said I only finished one but that is specifically because I still have like 20 pages left of this I think. I think so. Yeah, because I think we left off on 287, which, like, the chapters start in the middle of pages in this book. Um, it's not, like, separation between, like, most books. Um, we left off on 287, and I still have until 297. So, I actually have 10 more pages in this book to finish, but I feel like I'm close enough I can semi sort of review it. Um, actually... I think I'm going to end up waiting till December to review this um, because I'm already at the end of November and I haven't finished it. Um, I wrote here, 1984, not done yet, but 1984 is a dystopian novella by George Orwell published in 1949, which follows the life of Winston Smith, um, a low-ranking member of the party who is frustrated with the omnipresent rules or eyes of the party and its omnius ruler Big Brother. Big Brother controls every aspect of people's lives um, and it's very much like continuously talking about the thought police and that's a very interesting concept. I, I do want to finish it before I review it um, so I'll have a deeper in-depth conversation with you about that in December. The next book that I have been reading and I am only, this one hasn't been bad. I am uh, 83 pages in, um, so out of a, I think it's 550 pages, I have quite a bit to go in this. But I knew that like I wasn't enjoying Brave New World in 1984, which everyone across everywhere, especially on Reddit, recommended reading those together, which is why I tried to do that or get them done at the same kind of time in the same month. Um, this one I'm actually enjoying. This one I just want to be in a better reading mood to read this, which is why I took this one so slow. I think I only picked it up twice in November to get me to the 83 pages. Um, so a bit of a tease, but full review and um, synopsis and all those goodies will be coming in my December wrap up. I love that you can see my dog's ears on my bed up there. Um, and then the very last one 
Um, certainly last but not least, and the one I've enjoyed so far the most in November, which I can't wait to finish it into December, is the Collected Schizophrenia Essays by S. May Wong. Um, I actually believe that this just came out. I'm not super far in. Um, I am 17 pages into it, and so far I am loving it. So far it's not like I haven't made it that far in, but so far it's um, been very interesting. Um, on here it says, a deep, illuminating, and explosively written dive into a life of living with mental illness. Um, I don't personally know anyone with schizophrenia, um, but that doesn't really change my feelings or desire to want to learn more about psychology and mental illness related things. I just have like a huge, huge driving power and like, I wouldn't necessarily call it a passion, but like, I just want to understand people better. Um, and I just want to take in everything that I can to learn. Always, 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 I want to learn things. Um, so I'm very, very, actually very excited and I'm so happy to be done with, almost done with 1984 um, and to be done with Brave New World so I can move on to things going into December that I think I will enjoy significantly more because those two classics, <sighs> they were hard for me legitimately honestly difficult for me to get through but I'm glad I've done them and now I can say that I've read them and moving on <laughs> um the other things that I wanted to talk about in November that I usually talk about in my wrap-ups is life stuff so Halloween had happened um and it was cute and it was so nice out and we just like walked around our neighborhood and you could tell there weren't as many people out this year because every house we went to people were like giving handfuls of candy away because they had that few of like kids come through. And then my husband's birthday was at the beginning of the month, which we took him out to dinner. I didn't really do a whole lot this month. Um, it was just my main focus was work and then preparation for going on this trip. Um, and then that was the last thing really this month that I just got back from yesterday was the Thanksgiving trip to go just spend some time with family in Washington State. Um, I don't have any real footage of anything from that besides uh, flying in the plane in the middle of the night basically because we had to be up at 2 a.m. both going there and coming back on our plane. Um, So that was exhausting and it didn't help the fact that we all were getting sick while going out there. Family was okay with it and we don't have COVID um, and didn't have COVID. But my son was super sick, but I, you know, always double confirmed that like it was okay, that he wasn't feeling well, obviously on medication and stuff to get there. Um, but my husband really lost his voice and it was his throat and now that seems like that's affecting me, but otherwise I haven't really been super sick. Um, and then kind of the last thing of this month is the games. I played uh, Gris, which was absolutely gorgeous and I loved it and I would absolutely play it again. It was such a significant thing for me to play this month because to me, um, and it has like a different kind of wrap up and that's in that video, which I'll iCard. Um, to me, it was like a journey through grief. And so adding the color and everything back in through the story and there was a part, a very significant part where she meets the little forest friend that made me cry while I was playing that so bad. And then I did a few polls on YouTube um, asking if, you know, you wanted the full gameplay or breaking it down to an hour. <laughs> and most people said they wanted hour breakdowns. 
And then the n only thing that people voted for was that they wanted me to talk in the playthroughs um, versus just do no commentary. So I'm taking that advice and I moved on into Strange Horticulture that way as well, which I still have one more video to film at the stage to wrap that game up. And I love that game because I'm such a plant freak and apothecary, witchy, like horticulture-y type vibe of stuff is what I wish I could live in. Um, but yeah, I think that was this month of November. I have hopefully higher hopes for December of trying to put more energy into this stuff, but I was so focused on these games and work and then this trip that I didn't really get a full chance to maybe film or do as much or read as much in November as I really have the last several months. Um, it just felt like a month with our tons of first couple snows and stuff to take it a bit easier. But that is my wrap up for November of 2022. Um, books, life stuff, and game stuff. And yeah, half of these books I'll have to review in December. Plus if I read anything more, I think in 2023 I'm going to take it slower and I already have a book haul for 2023 which I'm so excited for so that will probably be coming like first thing in uh, January. Um, but I'll see you guys for a wrap up in next month. Between now and then will be gameplay and other related videos. I think I'm going to pick up The Sims and I really want to try one of the challenges in there. I've never played The Sims really at all. I played it for like 20 seconds one time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for this month. Be well, and I'll see you babes in the next one. Bye!